Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and the FDIC has just come out with their quarterly banking profile. And you guys, the information on this report is absolutely mind blowing as we now have over 60 banks on the troubled banking list with over $500 billion in unrealized losses. This is absolutely insane. And it is spiraling, by the way, out of control. The trajectory of these losses is alarming. Today, we'll ask the question, is there enough unrealized losses to create enough credit tightening that it will cause a financial crisis. Now, the value as a viewer you're going to get today is understanding what an unrealized loss is, where it's coming from, and how many banks exactly that we would need. And right now we have 1.4%, but how many banks would we need on the problem list for it to be considered a technical financial crisis? And that's what you guys are going to get today. Big shout out to Austin for sending me this article. Austin, I hope you're doing well. I hope you and your family are growing and winning. Now, the name of this article is $517 billion. Look at all those zeros for a second here. $517 billion in unrealized losses hit US banking system. The FDI says 63 lenders on the brink of insolvency. You guys, these are huge numbers and 63 bank failures would be a massive hit to the financing sector and the economy as a whole. Really good article here, you guys. It will be linked to my description. Unrealized losses in the US banking system are once again on the rise according to the numbers from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or rather the FDIC, which you should know by now is completely useless. The design of the FDIC is to make you feel comfortable depositing your money in the banks. That's it. They don't have enough money to cover a banking crisis. Not even one. They couldn't even cover one bank. They had to do the discount. Do you guys remember that? The FDI... All right, I'm moving on. In his quarterly banking profile report, the FDIC says banks are now saddled with more than half a trillion dollars in paper losses on their balance sheets, due largely to exposure to the residential real estate market. So most of the unrealized losses are coming from residential real estate. And also remember that commercial real estate could also be residential real estate, like apartment buildings and things like that. But it's in that crazy residential real estate right now is wrecking these people and prices never go down. And yet people say, just continue to buy a house because they need you to, because if you don't continue to buy a house, they will go out of business. Unrealized losses represents the difference between price banks paid for securities and the current market value of those assets. For example, if banks purchase treasuries at 2%, now those treasuries are 5%, they just took a massive hit, right? Because, because now the market is paying 5%, but their assets only worth 2%. So that, again, that's a massive hit. Although banks can hold securities until they mature without making them to market on their balance sheet, Unrealized losses can become an extreme liability when banks need liquidity. Now, that's exactly what happened in Silicon Bank in Northern California. There was enough people that wanted to take their money out of the bank. The bank didn't even have their money. They had a lot of their money wrapped up into whole to maturity assets and securities. And so when they wanted the money, when the depositors wanted their money, it created a disaster in that bank. Because again, in order to get that money, they had to lose a significant amount of money because of those hold to maturity assets. If they sell assets and they don't hold them to maturity, they take massive penalties. And that's what's happening here, you guys. I hope you understand that. And it is important to understand that because it is creating a massive financial catastrophe behind the scenes. Unrealized losses on available for sale and held to maturity securities increased by $39 billion to $517 billion in the first quarter of 2024. We're seeing an acceleration of this again, most likely because there's so many commercial real estate loans that are forced to refinance into higher rates on top of that, lower vacancies because of things like work from home. In other words, commercial real estate is in real, real bad shape right now. Higher unrealized losses on residential mortgage-backed securities. So, I mean, gosh, I mean, residential mortgage. 
Okay, Re residential. Anyways, resulting from higher mortgage rates in the first quarter drove the overall increase. This is so important to understand, you guys, because we are not hearing about this enough. We're not hearing about what's going on behind the scenes. We're just being told everything is good. They're revising data. They're changing history. So we don't, we're not aware of what's going on. Again, the party's going to stop. It's just a matter of time. And the longer that this whole propping up goes on and this whole uneducated citizens, bad spending habits stuff goes on, the, the worst things are going to be. Now, this is the ninth straight quarter of unusually high unrealized losses since the Federal Reserve began to raise interest rates in the first quarter of 2022. That's also when they started quantitative tightening. The FDIC also says that the number of lenders on its problem list rose last quarter. According to the agency, these banks are on the brink of insolvency due to financial operations and managerial weakness or greed and corruption, let's just say, or a combination of both issues. Now listen to this. Now this is going to tell us how many banks need to be on the problem list for them to consider this a crisis. Okay. This is very important. The number of banks on the problem bank list, those with a Camels composite rating of four or five increased from 52 in the fourth quarter of 2023, all the way up to 63 in the first quarter of 2024. So that is 11 banks that was added to that list. The number of problem banks represents 1.4% of total banks, which was within the normal range of non-crisis periods of 1% to 2% of all banks, which means you guys were 0.6% away from it being a crisis. So again, we're at 1.4%, which is in the normal threshold, right? According to the FDIC, as long as we're within 1% to 2%, it's non-crisis. The interesting thing here, though, is the trajectory. The fact that we had a double-digit increase quarter over quarter, that means, in my opinion, it's not going to take very long for us to exceed 2% and for a crisis to be considered. Let me know whether or not you guys agree. I mean, look at how close we are. We're very, very close to that. Now, the total assets held by problem banks increased $15.8 billion to $82 billion during the quarter. This is a warning from the FDIC. Now, listen, as citizens, we need to understand this. These issues could cause credit quality, earnings, and liquidity challenges or credit tightening in the industry. In addition, deterioration in certain loan portfolios, particularly office properties and credit card loans, continue to warrant monitoring. So, the other black swan, credit cards, consumer credit cards, people stop paying them. When people stop paying, everything collapses. That's why income growth is so important to things being sustained. These issues together with funding and margin pressures will remain matters of ongoing supervisory attention by the FD. I see. In other words, we're starting to see quantitative tightening once again, and all of those lag effects kept catching up to the financing sector. The fact that it hasn't even collapsed yet is a little bit surprising to me. Now, I understand why the inflation, there's just so much money still, and that's really the problem. And as citizens, I think we're starting to realize why inflation and money printing is so bad. And think about this, you guys. The people that really needed the money, like the money printing was to help us through the lockdowns, right? The people that really needed the money, they didn't even barely get any money. It's the people that didn't need the money that got the money. And that's the problem. So when I see unrealized losses like that, the first question I have is how did you guys get in that situation with my money? And it makes me want to take my money away from them because why are they profiting from my money while in the meantime, I'm not? They're charging me fees to hold on to my money and to use my money to make profits. You guys, that's how the banking system works. And that's why there's so many people that are sick and tired of keeping their money in the banks. That's why there's this whole shift to crypto, which by the way, I don't believe in yet, maybe in the future. And that's why gold is at an all time record high. People right now, citizens, American citizens, they don't trust banks. We don't even, we don't trust the dollar. Look at what they're doing to us. How can the banking industry be okay with half a trillion dollars in unrealized losses? The reason is the Fed. 
The Fed is not designed to help us. The Fed is designed to help the banks. And the banks are saying, hey, Fed, you have to help us or we're not going to lend money to the citizens. Well, the thing is, is if they don't lend money to the citizens, then they're going to go out of business anyways. So I say, Fed, stop bailing out the banks and let them collapse. Please, guys, let me know whether or not you agree with that statement. Now, we'll visualize some of this data by going directly to the quarterly report from the FDIC. This came out May 29th. It will be linked in my description. This goes into a lot of comprehensive details if you guys are interested. But again, I just want to do some data visualization here on some really important things. Here's where I want to start. I want to start by looking at the chart of quarterly credit loss provisions. Essentially, guys, what this is representing is loans in default. So the banks that have loans that are essentially in default. And what I want to point out is, is the trajectory. Again, the trajectory is, is going up. Now, we're well above pre-pandemic, which means right now consumers are in worse shape. Consumers are in worse shape. We know consumers are in worse shape, whether they own a building or not, because defaults and them going up. The defaults are not getting better. The defaults are actually getting worse. Now, if we compare the GFC, which was the last great financial collapse, we're not at those levels yet. But from a decade standpoint, we are still well elevated. Now, what it says is the chart shows that the industry provision expense was $20.6 billion in the first quarter. Now, that's down $4.3 billion from the fourth quarter. And despite that quarter over quarter decline in provisions, it's still much higher than the pre-pandemic average for the past seven quarters. So right now there's $20.6 billion in debt. That's in default from pr probably most likely from consumers. That's a lot of money in default, wouldn't you say? Uh, but then again, you know, because I, I am personally a citizen, I probably can't even fathom what a billion dollars actually is. Okay, so this chart is really, really important. I like how it has 2008 on here because it's showing us that right now, as far as unrealized losses, we are in a uncomparable situation. It is You can't even compare the distress in the banking sector from unrealized losses to the GFC, to the great financial crisis, because there was almost none during the GFC. Right now, in addition to all of the factors we're facing, the overvaluation asset prices, the overwhelming unaffordability, the lack of income growth, the surging delinquencies, this right here, you guys, may be the biggest thing of all. Because in addition to assets being available to sell and they could take a hit, most of these unrealized losses are hold to maturity, which is represented in the blue line, which means their money, I'm sorry, our money, your and I money are locked up. They can't touch it. In fact, if we wanted, if me and you were the only people at those banks and we wanted our money, we would put the bank out of business. Do y'all hear me? Pity that as citizens, we're not more united. If we were more united as citizens, we can get a lot done. And again, you guys, the total is $516 billion. Never been a period in the last 20, 30 years that we've had this type of situation before. This is completely new. Lastly, I want you guys to take a look at this chart. This is pretty insane right here. This is bank non-owner occupied, non-farm, non-residential loan, past due, and non-accrual rates by asset size. And what I want you to pay attention to is the green line, okay? Now, the whole term that, you know, banks are the at least the top three banks are too big to fail. We better hope so, because they're going to need to be too big to fail, because look at the trajectory of the green line. The trajectory of the green line is telling us that most of the defaults from the commercial real estate side are from the large banks that have greater than two hundred and fifty billion dollars in assets. So the people that are taking the hits, the heaviest hits are the biggest lenders, and therefore they're going to need. That statement is going to need to be true. Now, let me read this to you. Looking more closely at CRE portfolios, the uptrend in past due and non-accrual non-owner occupied property loans continued in the first quarter. The industry's volume of past due and non-accrual or PDNA non-owner occupied CRE loans increased by 1.8 billion or 9% quarter over quarter as seen in this chart. Deterioration is concentrated in the largest banks, which reported a PDNA rate of 4.48%, a default rate of, whoa, 4.48%, well above their pre-pandemic averages of, you guys ready, 0.59%. The amount of turmoil 
in the banking sector right now, especially in CRE, especially in unrealized losses, it's insane. It's, it, we can't even fathom. You guys, we can't fathom this. Uh, let me read this again. Pre-pandemic average was 0.59%. Right now, you guys, right now, the past due is 4.48%. That is almost a, what, a nine times come up, nine times worse nine times. Now, the next tier of banks, those with between $10 billion and $250 billion in assets, is also showing some stress in non-owner occupied property loans. The cohort's PD and A rate was 1.47% in the first quarter, up from 1.35% in the fourth quarter, and above the pre-pandemic rate of 0.66%. So it was very interesting that it was actually lower for the big banks pre-pandemic and the smaller banks, it was higher and that's completely reversed now. Now those big banks are in severe risk. Now, in conclusion, when we look at the five times in history, Dave Ramsey, this is for you. When we look at the five times in history that we've had price decline on a nationwide average and the four times we've had a home price crash, there's a few things that are common. Number one, there's a bubble formed. So asset prices went up way too much. It basically broke fundamentals. Exactly what happened right now. Number two, consumers stopped paying. And that's why I'm constantly debating with these bulls on real estate, why income growth is so important because people have to keep paying. If people stop paying because they can no longer afford to, things start crashing. But the third thing, and this may be the most important thing. Well, it is definitely an important thing. There was generally some type of financial collapse. And so when we look at 2024, pick. We, we have so many things that are going on right now. Just pick one of them. There are so many different scenarios that could lead to financial collapse. It's insane to me. And the other insane thing is the government has already bailed out the banking sector and bailed out the economy. That's why we have inflation. And so in other words, you guys, the bill is coming due very rapidly. And if you're wondering where I'm parking my money, I'm staying safe. I've eliminated as much risk as possible. And I'm simply trying to stay ahead of the inflation. It's hurting me. You guys, I've done so many things. I've changed the way I'm budgeting. I've, I've spent all my money on credit cards that give me two to 5% cash back on all of my spending. I pay all my bills off, no consumer debt. We have T bills with our down payment. I mean, but yet it's still incredibly difficult to save. So we have this dilemma right now. It's like, who's going to collapse first, the American citizen and consumer or the banks? Well, we already have that answer. The answer was the banks. The problem, they got bailed out, but yet we didn't. Let me know your thoughts on this, guys. I mean, this is a very frustrating thing. And when all is said and done, what's most important is that you learn to trust yourself because you possess the knowledge on how to get ahead. And usually the ways to get ahead is, is you just stop wasting your money. Literally just stop wasteful spending, start getting ahead by saving your money and being disciplined, you know, work out your goals, dream a little bit. Those dreams shape your goals, your goals shape your approach, take action. And other than that, guys, if you found a value, do me a favor and hit like on this video. It really helps out the channel. If you have any distress, any type of commercial loans that you need help with, please go into my description below, fill out the application form, email it to me, and I will give you a call back. And other than that, if you guys are out there investing in real estate, you already know I wish you luck and I hope you win.